maybe this is kind of a new concept to y'all. I know we got into it a little in the beginning of the semester that the Bible is food, right? We see this in Jeremiah 15, 16. Uh, it says, your words were found and I ate them. See this in the beginning of Ezekiel 3. Actually, God says, eat this scroll, which is like a weird thing to eat, right? But, but that's in the word, right? To eat the word. And then maybe some of y'all uh, did the John reading challenge with us this summer. And you saw all throughout John 6, right? I am the living bread. I am the bread that came down out of heaven. He who eats of me will live because of me. So we see all throughout the Bible that the word provides us that supply, that sustenance, right? To get us food, spiritual food. Okay, so let's read uh, Matthew 4.4 4 all together. Ready? Go. Okay, real fast note, what proceeds out of the mouth of somebody? Breath, yeah. It's almost like this is all connected, huh? Okay, so um, uh, another question. This is, um, you know, I'm not great at grammar. What are those little, like, those little, like, two things that come right before man, they, they come after God as well? What, what are those called? Right, okay, quotation marks. So... When, when Jesus is, is, is here, right, and he's, he's answering this, this is when Jesus was being tempted uh, by Satan in the wilderness, right? He had just been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He hadn't eaten anything in like over a month. That's a really long time. He was super hungry, I, I bet, right? Like, that's a long time. Okay. Um, and Satan comes and says, turn this rock, turn this stone into bread. Now, was Christ just like, you know, how could I respond to this? Hmm. I got it. I have an idea. I'll just come up with this really cool phrase on the spot. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is that what he did? No. He quoted the Old Testament, right? Because he was so filled and saturated with the word, right? So this is just a, a fantastic example to see that not only was Christ saying man shall live on every word, this is Christ actually living on those words. He didn't have physical food he was eating. He was living on the very words of God, right? And so we can enter into the same experience. In fact, if you read the rest of that chapter, Satan tempts him with two other things. And each time, Jesus responds with something from Deuteronomy 8, right? So when we really pour into the, the Word, really get into these verses, really feast on uh, the Word of God, it's in us. It becomes part of us. It constitutes us.